Hello everyone, please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for latest update. Today I am going to explain Vipro Java entry questions. So recently one of my subscribers attending the Vipro. So at that time they are asking almost 20 questions. So I just collect all the entry questions and I prepare the answers for the same. So first they are asking what is garbage collector. Java garbage collector is the process by which Java program perform automatic memory management. So this means or Java garbage collector is the one of the system program. It will always collect the unused memory spaces. So Java program compiled to byte code that can be run on a Java virtual machine. So this means so whenever we are compiling the Java program, so it will be converted into the byte code. So this byte code will be run in the JVM. So when Java program run on the JVM, so objects are created on the heap, which is the portion of memory dedicated to the program. So this means, so when we are running the program on JVM, so that time objects will be created. So where the object will be created, like in the JVM, there is a separate memory uh, portion is there. So that the memory portion is nothing but a heap memory. All the objects will be stored in the heap memory. So eventually some objects will be no longer be needed. So the garbage collector finds those objects and delete them to free up the memory. So this means sometimes the objects are not required for the all the program. So that time what the garbage collector is doing is it will find the unused memory objects and delete from the heap memory. So this is nothing but a garbage collector. So next question what they are asking is what is class loader and types of class loader. Class loader in Java is called by the JRE. Uh, JRE means Java Runtime Environment. So generally uh, the class loader is called by the JRE to dynamically load the classes whenever required by the application in the JVM. So whenever the uh, application required to load the classes, that time the JRE uh, calls the class loader to load all the classes. So in Java there are three types of class loaders are there. So one is the bootstrap class loader, another one is the extension class loader and third one is the system class loader. So what is bootstrap class loader? So it loads JDK internal classes, it loads rt.jar and other core classes, for example java.lang package and its related class. So this means, so when we are uh, importing the rt.jar file in our class, so this rt.jar file contain all the package like java.lang package, java.util package, java.io package like only it contains all the package. So what it will be uh, doing is a bootstrap class and loads the rt.jar file whenever it is required. So next is the extension class loader. It loads classes from the JDK extension directory. So generally this extension class loader loads the all the classes which are available in the extension directory. So the extension directory is available in a Java home lib folder. Next is the system class loader. This class loader loads classes from the uh, current class path which can set uh, while you are uh, invoking a program using uh, iPhone CP or iPhone class command uh, option. So generally this class loader is used to load the, all the classes which are available in the class path. So when we are setting the class path, when we are installing the JDK, that time we are setting the class path. This class loader will load all the classes which are present in the class path. So next question they are asking like what are the OOPS concepts available in Java? So in Java there are mainly four OOPS concepts are available like one is the inheritance, another one is the polymorphism, third one is the encapsulation and fourth one is the abstraction. So now I am going to explain each and every one in a brief. So first is the inheritance. Inheritance is a mechanism of acquiring the properties and measure from the parent class to child class is nothing but a inheritance. So in Java we have a five types of inheritance are available. One is the single level inheritance, another one is the multi level inheritance, multiple inheritance, fourth one is the hierarchical inheritance and fifth one is the hybrid inheritance. So next one is the polymorphism. Polymorphism means one name many form. That means many functions existed with the same name but their implementation is different from one class to another class. So like polymorphism means one name many forms. That means many functions which exist in the same class but their implementation is different. So that is nothing but a polymorphism. In Java there are two types of polymorphisms available 
like one is the compile time polymer prism another one is the run time polymer prism so next one is the encapsulation encapsulation means it is a mechanism of wrapping the variables and methods into a single unit is nothing but a encapsulation for example if you see the java bean class it contains all the variables and methods so it contains the getters and setters so that is nothing but a encapsulation what is abstraction Abstraction is the process of hiding the internal implementation details from the user and providing only necessary functionality to the user is nothing but a abstraction. So that means abstraction just hide the un unused mem like un unused functionality and it's just showing the whatever the user is expecting is nothing but a abstraction. For example, if you see the ATM mission, so ATM mission what it is showing only interface will be showing. So there in the interface we can perform all our operation like withdraw money or deposit money like pin change. Those are the like that is the front end it is showing. So what the customer is expecting. The customer is expecting only the front end. They want to perform some operation. But they don't know what happened when we click on the withdraw button. So the customer does not know what happened internally. That is nothing but an abstraction. So next one is the difference between abstract class and the interface. So abstract class can have an abstract and non-abstract methods. So that means the abstract uh, class contain a abstract method and a non-abstract method. So non-abstract methods means concrete methods. Abstract methods means if you declare any method as abstract, that is nothing but a abstract method. So interface can have only abstract methods since Java 8, it can have a default and static method. So generally interface does not have any like static and default methods, but in Java 8 onwards, it allows the uh, static and default method. So it contains only abstract methods. So by default, all the methods in the interface is abstract methods. So abstract class does not support a multiple inheritance. Through abstract class, we cannot create the multiple inheritance, but interface support a multiple inheritance. Abstract class can have a final and non-final and static and non-static variable. That means in abstract class, we can declare the variables as a final or static or non-static. But in case of interface, it contains only static and final variables. Abstract class can provide the implementation of interface, but interface cannot provide the implementation of the abstract class. Abstract keyword is used to declare the abstract class. Interface keyword is used to declare the interface. Abstract class can extend the another class and implement the multiple interface. But in case of interface, it can extend uh, another Java interface only. So abstract class can have extend using the keyword extend keyword. Interface can be implemented using the keyword implement. So Java abstract class can have a class members like uh, private, protected, and etc. Uh, members of Java interface only public and by default. So if you see the syntax of the abstract class, so here we are using abstract keyword to create the abstract class. Here it is having the abstract method called draw method. So if you see the implementation of the interface, so interface keyword is used to create the interface is the drawable is the interface name. Here is the one method called draw. So now I am going to explain fifth question. It is a constructor. So constructor contain a block of code. It is just like a method. Construct is called by when instance of the class is created and also memory allocated for the each object. So constructor contains what it contains generally. It should contain the block of code. It's just like a method. How the method look like? The constructor also is one type of the method. But uh, it is when it is called like for calling the methods, we are using the like object name uh, dot method name. But in case of like to call the constructor, constructor will be called whenever we are creating the object and the memory is allocated for the object at that time. The constructor is called when we create the object using new keyword. So whenever we are creating the object for the class, the constructor will be uh, like called at the time of creating the object. If the class does not have any constructor, the Java compiler create the default constructor. Suppose if we are not creating the constructor, so by default JVM will create the default constructor. So rules to create a constructor, there are two rules are there. The name of the constructor is same as class name. So the constructor name is same as class name. Constructor uh, does not have any written type. But if you see the uh, method, method has a, a written type. But in case of constructor, it does not have any written type. So how many types of uh, constructors are there? Like one is the 
like uh, uh, two, there are two types of constructors are there in java like one is the um, uh, like uh, default constructor another one is the parameterized constructor so how many types of expressions are there so this is the sixth question they are asking there are two types of expressions are there in java one is the checked exception another one is the unchecked exception so what is checked exception Checked exceptions are also known as compile time exception as these exceptions are checked by the compiler during the compilation process to confirm whether the exception is handled by the programmer or not. If not, then system displays the compile time error like for example SQL exception, IO exception and class not found exception. So what is the checked exception means? The exception which are checked by the compiler. So when we compile the program, so at that time the compiler will check any exception is there or not. So if it is there, it will throw the exception like uh, uh, SQL exception, IO exception. Those are the checked exception. Next is the unchecked exception. The unchecked exceptions are those exceptions that occur during the execution of the program. Hence, they are also referred as a runtime exception. These exceptions generally ignored by during the compile time. There are uh, not a checked. Uh, they, uh, these are not checked by the compiler. And for example, automatic exception, null pointer exception, number format exception. So generally, unchecked exceptions are there at the time of the programming run. It will come. So for example, automatic exception, null pointer exception, number format exception are the example of unchecked exception. So seventh question is what is thread? Thread is a lightweight subprocess. The smallest unit of process is nothing but a thread. So threads are independent. If the exception, sorry, if there occurs uh, uh, exception in other thread, it does not affect other thread. It uses the shared memory. So if in case if any exception is there in one thread, but it, it cannot affect the other thread. So what is multi-threading? Multi-threading in Java is the process of executing multiple threads simultaneously. So suppose uh, at a time if you perform multiple operations, so that is nothing but a multi-threading. So how many ways we can create a thread? Like in Java, there are two ways we can create a thread. One is the extending the thread class and another one is the implementing the runnable interface. So extending thread class is like I'm creating the multi is my thread class name. So I'm extending the thread class. So thread is the super class of multi thread. So here I'm writing one run method and I'm implementing that one. So here in this main method, I'm creating the object for the thread and I'm calling the start method. So when we call the start method, the start method internally calls the run method and it will display the this output. So another way is we can implement the runnable interface. So here I'm implementing the runnable interface. I'm writing the run method and implementing the run method uh, uh, body. So in the main method, I'm creating the like a class to object. And here I'm creating the thread object. I'm passing the uh, this object as a argument to the, the thread class. I'm calling the start method internally thread method called the run method and it will display the output. So next question is what is serialization? Serialization in Java is a mechanism of writing the state of the object into the byte stream is nothing but a serialization. So it's just like a mechanism to write the state of the object into the uh, byte stream. So it is mainly used in a RMA, Ibernet, and EJP and JMS technologies. So the reverse operation of the serialization is called a deserialization. So next what they are asking like what is clone in Java? Cloning. So the object cloning is a way to create a exact copy of an object. So it's a process of creating the same object of the existing object. The clone method is the object class is used to create the clone object. Java.lang.clonable interface we, we should implement whenever if we want to clone the object. So if you don't implement the clonable interface, the clone method generates the class not found exception. So if you see the structure of the clone method, this is the object is the return type, this is the product in the visibility mode. So it throws the class not found, uh, clone not supported exception. So here I'm creating the customer class object and I'm passing the two arguments. So here I'm creating another object customer two. So here I'm cloning the customer one. So what is transcend keyword? Transcend keyword is used to mark the member variable not be serializable when it is persisted to the schema byte. This keyword plays an important role to meet security constraint in Java. It ignores the original value of the variable and saves the default values of the variable data type. So this means, so for example, if you don't want to participate in the serialization, so we can make those variables as a transcend. 
for example i have a username and password but the password i don't want to serialize both so that time i can make that password as a transient so if you declare the transient keyword so the password is not serializable so because of the security so we can make the password as a uh, transient so because of the actual value the default value will be transferred to through the network so what is string in java generally string is a sequence of characters but java string is an object that represent a sequence of characters so java dot lang dot string class is used to create the string object so how many ways we can create the string like there are two ways one is the string literal another one is the using new keyword so next question is what is collection collection is an object that represent a group of objects such as classes and interface so collection is just like a uh, collection of classes and interface what is difference between array list and linked list so array list internally use dynamic array to store the element but in case of linked list it uses a double linked list to store the element so manipulation with array list is slow because internally uses a array so basically the array contain the index format because of that uh, manipulation is very slow if you element is removed from the array it, all the bits uh, are should be in the memory so we have to shift all the bits but in case of manipulation with linked list is faster than array list because it uses a double linked list so no bit shifting is required so if you remove the any object middle of the linked list so it will be directly pointing one object to another object so array list can act as a list of uh, list only because it implement the list only linked list uh, uh, like linked uh, linked list class can act as a list and a queue both because it implements a list and queue interface array list is better for storing and accessing the data but in case of linked list is better for manipulation the data so next question is what is list list is the child interface of collection it is an order collection of object in which duplicate values can be stored so that means in the list it allows the duplicate values also it list to preserve the insertion order so whatever order we are inserting the same order will be stored in the list it allows positional access and insertion of element so next is the what is the set in java so set interface is present in java.util package and extend the collection interface it is an order collection of the object in which a duplicate values cannot be stored if you see that difference between list and set so list is the it allows duplicate but set does not allow duplicate list to preserve the insertion order that means whatever order we are inserting the same order will be stored in the list object but in case of uh, set it does not preserve the insertion order Why, random order it will be stored so what is map is asking so map is an object that maps the key and value a map cannot be contain duplicate key each key can have map to the most one of the value so if you want to store any data like key and value pair format that time you can go for the map interface so next question what is they are asking like what is difference between hash map and hash table so hash map is a not synchronized not synchronized means it can allow multiple threads at the same time uh, but in case of uh, uh, if it is not a thread shape a uh, thread shape and it cannot be shared between uh, many threads without proper synchronized code but in case of hash table is a synchronized uh, it is a thread shape and can be shared with many threads uh, it is a thread shape that means uh, uh, like uh, at a time only one thread can access in the thread uh, hash table object hash map allows one null key and multiple null values but in case of hash table does not allow uh, any null key and values so hash map is a new class introduced in a jdk 1.2 but in case of hash table is a legacy class legacy class means it's a old class before jdk 1.2 it is introduced hash map is a faster but hash table is a slow hash map is a trash by iterator so we can use iterator to iterate the hash map but in case of hash table iterated by enumerator and iterator that means it allows enumerator and as well as iterator to iterate the hash table object iterator in hash map is a fail fast enumeration in hash table is a fail safe so next question and the final question is he is asking difference between stored pointer and function in sql so the function must return a value but in stored pointer it is optional even a process can return zero or more value that means the function it returns a value but in stored pointer it is optional it may be return a value or it may not, may, may not be return a value so like uh, function can have only input parameter uh, for it whereas processor can have a input and output parameters so that means function can have a only input parameters it contain but it does not contain out par output parameter but in case of processor it can have a input and output parameters so function can call by the processor whereas processor cannot call by the function that means 
function uh, we can call the function in the procedure but we cannot call the procedure in the function so function allows a select statement only whereas procedure allows all select as well as dml operation we can insert update delete in the procedure you cannot manage the transaction in a function but you can manage the transaction in a procedure so friends don't forget to subscribe my channel thanks for watching this video